I'm Kate Gleeson, I'm on the Organising Committee of Politics in the pub. So we're starting a little late, but ironically, that's because everyone's stuck in traffic. This is one of the most horrendous nights for traffic I've seen personally. <laughs> so, what a night to talk about West Connects and what we can do to stop this road development and its impact on our inner city communities. Tonight we have three esteemed speakers. Wendy Bacon, who is researcher and journalist for New Matilda and The Hub at Sydney, Sydney Hub. Pauline Lockie from the West Connection Action Group and Jenny Leong who is the member for Newtown. So I will hand over to our esteemed speakers. They will each speak. As you know, we'll take a break and have questions afterwards. So thanks, Wendy. Cheers. Tonight we're focused on the West Connects motorway and how we're going to stop it. And I hope we are going to stop it, but that's a really big question. There aren't any simple answers. It's a pretty complex matter, and I'm sure that Pauline and Jenny uh, will have more to say about that. But I thought I could introduce it to you, and because I'm not assuming that everyone here uh, has a complete picture of the West Connects, and I think that would be very difficult even for someone who's been thinking about it a fair bit. Um, look, I'll briefly return to a, an overall description of it fairly soon. Uh, but I wanted to um, just focus for a minute on one part of what is the West Connex motorway. It's going to be, uh, it's probably going to be the world's biggest continuous motorway. Um, I'm not sure if that's completely true, but it's, it's a massive thing. But I wanted to, because I'm a journalist and therefore trying to get out there and see what's going on, and because I believe that you can look at a map and you can get buried in traffic statistics and it just all seems uh, very distant, it's probably good to some extent to look at it in the particular and to look at the local impacts. So I don't want you to think, as uh, Minister Gay would say, that we're all anti-road. I'm not anti-road. I came by very slowly by road here tonight. Uh, but nevertheless, um, <coughs> I do think we have to look at what roads are really doing to our society. So last week um, I went out to a particular spot very close to where the West Connex is actually beginning at the moment in Auburn. Um, it's just not near to a school called Auburn North, which is just near to a footbridge that goes across the M4. And I went and stood on that footbridge uh, fairly close to school, end of school time, where parents were going to bring their little children and pick up their slightly bigger children from the school that's literally just on the edge of the M4. And you can look from that bridge and you look at this massive expanse of concrete with cars pouring down it, roaring down it. Um, you can see that it's no solution that it's producing traffic as much as it's dealing with traffic. And you know, I stood there and I actually thought about the remnants of what was um, beneath. And when we're thinking about um, the land and the Aboriginal people, you know, I was thinking about the Duck River that once only um, more than 200 years ago when white people <coughs> invaded this country, that was a very verdant landscape. It's just near Duck River, it was called Duck River. Um, because for the people there it was, it was very, um, lots and lots, lots of ducks, lots of fish. Now that motorway, the EIS for that particular section of the West Connects, it's one of the few bits of the EIS that have been done, um, shows that that ex a further expanse, further lanes that are going to be added at Auburn and Silverwater, uh, that they will uh, threaten the remaining uh, species that, that are surviving there amidst all those traffic, that traffic and poisonous fumes. And when um, I've read a bit more into what this particular part of the West Connects which will do, which will add a lane on, on either side, um, you read in that, when you get right into the documentation, which is of course the job of a journalist, you see that on several parts of that road, the, um, the levels of nitrogen oxide, which causes asthma and heart attacks, will be elevated above safe levels. When they gave that part the approval, they said, fine, it is above the safe levels, but we say that is fine. And of course, they didn't even measure what the effect of the ultra-fine particles, uh, which since that M4 was built, um, science has now, you know, medical science and uh, 
research has established that those ultrafine uh, particles could be described as the asbestos of the 21st century, that they are carcinogenic. We have small children and a preschool that are living right between Parramatta Road and the M4 and I don't believe that, certainly the parents know nothing about what's about to happen in the construction there and certainly the media hasn't told them and I doubt that their local member Luke Foley, uh, newly elected to that area, has been very involved uh, either in communicating those issues. Now just going to the bigger picture as councillor, um, John Mant, who's one of um, Sydney's and I think Australia's most expert planners, some of you may know that his own experience goes back to the days of, of Tom Uren. Um, as he said at uh, Leichhardt Town Hall, which was packed with 400 people on Tuesday night, he said, you know, the West Connects makes you feel like you're in Alice in Wonderland. And in a way it does because it's being put forward as a solution not backed up by evidence, no business case, no EIS for three quarters of it, and I know that probably Jenny and Pauline may mention uh, the deficiencies of the planning process even more. It's being put forward as a solution when just about every respected expert you could talk to would say it is not a solution to Sydney's transport pro uh, problems. Now just to give you a very quick overview, does everyone here feel they know exactly where this West Connects is going. I mean, I can't tell you exactly where it's going either. But I can tell you, I can tell you, I'm not about to reveal a really big investor story, but I can tell you that it's a 33 kilometre big loop, that it begins out of Parramatta, it gets widened, uh, the M4 gets widened until it gets to Homebush. Uh, when it gets to Homebush, a tunnel begins, and I've visited the site there where there's mature fig trees a whole block, a pretty unusual thing in Homebush where a big pollution stack will go up and then there's a tunnel underneath coming up with a great big portal uh, in Concord uh, across to Haberfield where it will emerge in Parramatta Road in two very big outlets there. And then that's the next bit. We don't really know where it's going to come through the... Um, where it's not going to come through as far as we're concerned but where they hope to put it through to uh, both Roselle and then across to St Peter's and uh, then it will join up with a duplicate M5 which will steer over to the airport but plus out to Beverly Hills. Now Whoa. along that track of course is where the Wallow Creek Preservation Society and many other people along the M5 said year after year do not put the M5 in, it will not work and of course it hasn't worked, it's a shocking failure. So I'll just take you to Beverly Hills where um, uh, I've also been uh, a couple of times lately. Now, Beverly Hills is the other spot at the other end of this big loop where the West Connects has begun there. And there, just like out at Auburn and just like Homebush, you've got a major motorway that has already carved up a community. You know, there's people there who can walk to see their relatives who are now divided by that motorway and have watched the failure um, evolve and out there we've met people who along that motorway planted trees and planted vegetation and yes you know if it was a great solution you might say oh well you know some things have got to happen but in this case it's not a solution but in the little bit of work that's been started there they've swept away trees that have been planted by the residents and uh, um, they also uh, have been engaged in a very intense feedback process to which they've got uh, in a sufficient answers and in some cases actual lies. Now that particular point, and whether any of you know King George's Road and the M5, but I can tell you that the whole idea of what's happening there to widen that point of the M5, I've got one minute so, uh, but uh, thank you for saying it. I don't want to go too long because I know these people have got um, very important things to say as well, but what's going to happen there is it's going to be widened. The actual figures, the actual government figures, show that those drivers, those people sitting there in the morning at King George at one of the worst traffic spots in the world, apparently, are actually going to be sitting there for longer after these works are done. Now, the, as you can see, while there's a huge amount we don't know, there's some information that we do know, but it's buried away in documents that you really have to study and I feel as a journalist that one of the, um, while we do have some very good reporting on this from 
like Jake Sawick at the Sydney Morning Herald, but he's only going to get the occasional article. It's also a failure in communication because I really believe that if the people, um, uh, particularly the people in the West, you know, the people, for example, at Mount Druid who have the most shocking public transport system, that's a social need that we have completely failed to fulfil, These those people will not benefit from this West Connects. It's not for them. Um, and so, you know, one of the really big challenges, I think, is to communicate that the West Connects is not a solution for Sydney, just bring more and more traffic towards this side of the city. But equally, um, those resources, that 15 to 20 billion that we're going to put, we're not going to put, I shouldn't keep saying we're going to put, we're not going to put into the West Connects, that if only that 15 billion could be spent on constructive public transport, particularly in the west of Sydney, and about 15% of cars could be got off the road, um, we could be a whole lot better off. So um, before handing over to Pauline, I'd just like to really urge you, I know many of you have got many issues that you're involved with here, um, and some of you I've known for quite a while, involved in different issues, but even if you can put a little bit of time into helping us stop this West Connects, we really can do it, I think, but it's going to take a massive grassroots campaign. Thank you.